Good morning. I'm here at the Zimmerman Lake Trailhead, and I believe this is inside the Roosevelt National Forest. And here's the plan. I'm gonna start over here and take it up to the Montgomery Pass, which is, I believe, right over here somewhere out of view. And then up to this high point, which is over 11,400. Up to this high point, which is over 11,500. And then these are the diamond peaks right here. That's the highest one, over 11,800. Then I'm gonna bounce it out here. That one's just over 11,700. And then I'm gonna backtrack, take it down the saddle and meet up with the Cameron Pass parking area. And then hopefully I can find the Cameron Connector Trail that goes through the trees here to complete the loop. But if I can't find that, I'll just hike down the road. Official start time, 640. All right, looks like two miles up to the pass. This is really pretty through here. However, I am keeping my eyes peeled for moose because they are everywhere out here. And I actually saw four of them at the trailhead. Well, three of them at the trailhead and then one of them was maybe a hundred yards down the road. I am really enjoying this trail right now. It is really pleasant. My legs are a little toasted from doing Mount Meeker yesterday. So that's why I'm doing kind of an easy one. Just want a nice stroll out here in nature. It should be really nice. It looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day. That makes me happy. Popeye gets all pumped up with his spinach. I get all pumped up with a blue sky. It looks like I just hit a little burned area. I've been seeing it off to my right, but now it's up close and personal. That sucks. I'm hoping that's the end of that because it looks really nice ahead of me the way it should look. I've been hiking for about 45 minutes and I'd say I'm probably 75% up to the pass. So shouldn't be much longer. And then from that point on, I'm gonna be out of the trees starting to open up a little bit and then check it out right up here to the left is going to be Montgomery Pass this is a really good winter route as well really fun not too terribly challenging I think that's where I'm heading next up and over And in one hour and five minutes, I'm up here, Montgomery Pass. If you take it up in that direction, it will eventually lead up to Clark Peak, even though that's a heck of a hike. Lots of elevation gain. Looks pretty hazed out over there, but that's gonna be in the direction of Walden, I believe. And this is where I'm heading next.
I hate when you're eating beef jerky and you think you have one good piece left at the bottom and then you pull it out and it's this stupid thing. Well, I've been sitting up here at Montgomery Pass for a few minutes, but I'm gonna keep the adventure going. I'm gonna knock out this hump right here. And Montgomery Pass is just over 11,000 feet. And that high point up there is just over 11,400, which means I'm looking at about a 400 foot gain. And I'm almost up there. I should be able to see the remaining high points. Yep. Wow. And then this is looking over at what I have left. That highest point on the right is the tallest diamond peak. That one is over 11,800. And that's looking back in the direction that I have come from. And you can see that real long traverse way out to Clark Peak. I mean, Clark Peak is like barely sticking up back there. And then the one to the right is Cameron Peak. Let's keep it going. Heading on up to the next high point. Now let's work the upper body with some push-ups. We'll use five different hand positions. Let's start with normal grip, shoulder width. This is really spectacular up here. Super awesome. All right, and I've made it up here to the top of the second high point. And that's looking at what I have left. Those are the two diamond peaks. The true summit is of course the one on the right. That's looking back at where I've come from. Looking pretty awesome. And that really wasn't too hard at all. You ready? And let's keep it going. Next stop, Diamond Peaks Summit. That's looking down onto the Cameron Pass area, and that is 14 Highway. This is the last major uphill section, looking at just under 400 vertical feet. Yeah, earlier I thought that that first incline was going to be the crux, but this is the worst part of the hike so far. It's pretty steep. No trail. All right, guys. 
and we're up here. This is the summit of Diamond Peaks. Keep your legs shoulder width apart. Are you ready? One, two, three. And this is looking at what I have left. Really easy. That's looking back at where I've come from. That is awesome. That's looking down onto the Joe Wright Reservoir and 14 Highway. And then as I pan over, you can see the Cameron Pass parking area right down there. And here's what I have left. I'm gonna continue on the ridge out to the other Diamond Peak. Then I'm gonna backtrack it to the saddle, take it down. Hopefully I can locate the trail that leads back to the Cameron Pass parking area. And then I'm gonna look for the Cameron Connector Trail that leads down to the Zimmerman Lake Trailhead. I've been sitting on the top of Diamond Peaks, the highest point anyway, for quite a while. But it's time to keep moving. I'm gonna drop it down and head on over to the other Diamond Peak. These two other people showed up, looked like a son and his dad. And I was talking to them for a second. And he's like, yeah, we parked at Cameron Pass. I'm like, Cameron Pass? It's Cameron. The word is Cameron, isn't it? I sure hope it's not Cameron Pass. I've been saying it wrong for years. All right, guys, and this is the Diamond Peaks South Summit. That's looking back at the North Diamond Peak. Awesome. That's looking down to Cameron Pass or Cameron Pass. And a look at 14 Highway. The Diamond Peaks lie right on the border between the Roosevelt National Forest on the left and the Colorado State Forest State Park on the right. That's looking over into the Lake Agnes Cirque. And let's name some peaks. Starting right to left, Braddock Peak. Mount Muller, Mount Richthofen, Noku Crags, and then it drops down to Thunder Pass, and back on up to Lulu Mountain, Thunder Mountain, and Iron Mountain.
Well, it's about 11 o'clock. I've been sitting up here for quite a while, but it's time to go. It's time to head on back. It's a little windy up here, but it actually feels good. And another thing that's good is the news that I got for you. I'm looking at 99% downhill the rest of the way. Oh yeah. And why does it look like I have another mountain to go up and over? Uh, I thought I just said it was gonna be all downhill. I said 99%. This is the 1%. This is a great hike to do if you're looking for some solitude. You're not gonna see many people out here, if any. I've only seen those two other dudes all day. And then right here, the trail ends and it does get a little bit tricky. I was watching those two dudes come down from the summit and they got to this point and they just stopped and they were like looking at each other. They did not know where to go, but I believe we need to keep going straight through the open space here. And then I'm hoping there's gonna be a marked spot in the trees and that's where the trail's gonna resume. This is the way, I'm gonna kind of hook it around the little creek and drop down on the south side of it. Yep, here's part of the trail. It's faint, but this is it. The trail peters out once again through here, but I think I know where to go. I think I want to continue straight and the trail continues over here somewhere. I was watching those guys earlier and they went down right over here and then the last I saw of them they followed the water down. They're gonna have a bad time. That's not the way to go. I mean this could get really confusing. It's like where do you drop in? Where does the trail continue in these trees? I'm not sure if this is it. But I think this is it. All right, and I am back on the trail. I did go down the correct way and it is confirmed that those other two dudes went down the wrong way. I hope they made it all right. I mean, this trail is incredibly steep as it is. I wouldn't want to have to bushwhack this part. That could get nasty. If you get lost out here and you're trying to find the trail, it's just to the south of the creek. And this thing is really steep. All right, guys. And I'm back down to the Cameron Pass trailhead. And that took about 55 minutes to come down. It helps if you can find the trail. And now that I've made it down to the Cameron Pass trailhead, I need to try and find that Cameron connector trail. And I think I might have just found it. Yep, this looks like it. <laughs> this thing might get a little hairy. Woo! Yep, I see it right there, it says camera connector. Cool. Well, let's do it.
while they put that sign up high. My goodness. Cameron connector. We're on it. This Cameron connector trail is nothing but a bushwhack. I don't see a trail out here at all. So before this gets too nasty, I'm just gonna bite the bullet. I'm gonna cross the water right here, head back up to the road, and then just walk the road. It's right there. It's not too far away at all. I'm just looking for a good spot to cross. And I think I see it up here. I'm backtracking a little bit. But like I said, I'm just gonna get out of this stuff right now and play it safe. Woo, all right. And my feet are soaked. All right. And there it is. I am home free now. This might be boring, but at least I'm not gonna die on it. I probably wouldn't die on the camera and connector either, but I just didn't wanna deal with that anymore. And that's looking back at what I did. I was just up there a couple hours ago. I am almost back to the Zimmerman Lake Trailhead. Oh yeah. And it looks like there's a lot of cars there too. It's just now 1245, which means that that took an hour and 45 minutes to come down. It's not too bad. I think we're looking at a little over seven miles on this hike. Well, I hope you enjoyed that hike. And until the next one, y'all, peace.